perfect temperature for a game. It's a huge conference game, stuff yeah. like that. Just kind of go off of that. And I'll be like, so Daniel, the Sparefield team, they've been having a strong season, but last week, kind of a bit of a hiccup, close loss to undefeated Lakota West. I don't know if it's a hiccup. Were they supposed to be that close? They weren't supposed to be, no. Welcome to Dwyer Field here for some Friday Night Lights. It's a beautiful day for some football, week nine. It's senior night for the Mason Comets as they take on their GMC rival, the Fairfield Indians. Now both these teams currently 16-2 on the season. The Comets are slightly ahead in the conference standings due to their 6-1 conference record. The Comets looking to close out their home schedule and maintain their spot in the top three of the GMC. Fairfield are coming off a close loss to undefeated Lakota West should be a terrific in-conference matchup. I'm Andrew Little alongside my broadcast partner for the night, Daniel Panetti. Daniel, how you doing? Doing good. Sun's setting and it's perfect temperature for a game. This is one of the biggest games, the biggest game for Mason so far this season. Winner of this game is going to get a huge jump in playoff setting and yeah, just very excited. Yeah, kink out night for the keys of the game here it's a you just touched on it it's a huge conference matchup both these teams have lost to Lakota West so they're out when it comes to winning the conference title but a lot of playoff implications tonight both teams fighting for a home playoff spot the winner of the game tonight likely going to be in position for that and Fairfield they're led by their star quarterback the junior Talon Fisher he's a true dual threat he's got over a thousand rushing yards and passing yards on the season and that means that Mason's run defense really needs to step up. Step up, Daniel. How about you tell us about some of those D linemen for the Comets? Yeah, it's going to be a big game. You have to get pressure. You can't let him run the ball. That's really what they are. You see, you think about a dual threat quarterback. You think of Fisher. You know, he leads the GMC in rushing yards with about a 1,140, and he's still a respectable passer as well. So all parts of the game, you're going to have to be ready for this defense. He had such a great game against Sycamore last week, but against a team like. Fairfield, who's top three in the GMC, getting over 400 yards per game. It's going to be a huge challenge. Yeah, and it's not just Talon Fisher for the Indian offense. They're running back Jordan Jackson, one of the two Jackson twins, both committed to play football at the collegiate level for West Virginia University. Jordan Jackson, top five in the GMC in rushing yards as well. He's got a lot of speed. Broke a big touchdown against the Comets last year in the playoffs. And that's another thing we haven't talked about yet. This is a rematch of how this Comets season ended last year. They lost uh, in the first round of the playoffs. It was the 8-9 matchup. So there's a revenge game for the Comets. That should only add to the spice of this game. Already really high stakes. Yeah, you bring up Jordan Jackson. It's not like Fisher's the only guy who's going to run all over a defense. Jordan Jackson, true definition of a running back one for a team. You can't stop Fisher. You focus on Fisher. That's going to open up a read option. You either hand it off to him or Fisher's just going to take it 40 yards for a score. And we saw that last week against Lakota West. Rarely do you have a team that's taking Lakota West into double overtime. And, you know, Fairfield was knocking on the door of tying the game back 38-31. He had that huge touchdown in the final minutes for Fisher. It's about a 35-yard rushing touchdown. And, you know, you just can't mention it enough. You stop the run, f you stop the run for Mason, you should be fine. Yeah, both these two teams you know, had some of the more interesting matchup against Lakota West when it comes to GMC opponents. Fairfield had that overtime thriller. The Comets played Lakota West really tight in the first half. Things kind of got out of hand in the second half. So two teams that have proven that they're very strong this year. Great showing here for senior night as the Comets get one more chance at home to play in front of their home crowd. Now, if they do win this game or next week and they get a top eight spot in the playoffs they'll have another home playoff game and that's another thing that's on the line and we're gonna head to a quick break but we'll be back just before the kickoff We 
we could find a way to get inside each other's minds. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk, Walk a mile in my shoes. Well, before you abuse, criticize and accuse. Walk a mile in my shoes. Spin it. Daniel, they've been one of the best in the conference this year, putting up Welcome 35 points a game, almost 400 yards a game. Yeah, uh, you can't touch more up on it. You have to, we, it's all we really talked about. Stop the run. You have two out of the three top rushers in the GMC with Fisher and Jackson. So, yeah, Mason last week, they were able to generate pressure on Sycamore pretty well. So, if you can keep that going, see what Mason can do. Defense is the strength, uh, common strength. We'll see how that matchup tonight. It's Fisher takes the snap, takes the jet sweep handoff, and he's going to throw it. And drop right there from Juster Spataki, the running back. You immediately see the run, see the rollout. Super agile quarterback. He's going. You're going to see a lot of that today. Read option, play action really what Fairfield is most known for. Yep, now Fisher back to the line. Jordan Jackson, the star running back in the backfield with them. Kind of lined up in a bunch formation. And Fisher hands it off to the man in motion. That's Braden Shanklin, and he is stuffed. Jake, Nick Sailors, Caden Davis. Plenty of comments there in the backfield for that stop. Great job to get to contain on the outside, really nowhere to go, that whole entire sweep. Mason defense just completely ready for it. And that's what you have to see from this defense all day. Yeah, first play, they, you know, they faked the jet sweep right there, they handed off to Shanklin, the Comets were totally ready for it. Blew up that play, and now you've got third and long coming up. You gotta force them to throw, that's how Mason's gonna do it. If you give them opportunities to run, they, they're gonna run all over you. Yep, Fisher and Jackson in the backfield. Fisher holds on to it with that read option. And he's pushing forward, gets back to the original line of scrimmage, but not much further, and it's going to be fourth down. So a great first drive stop for the Comets there, the three and out, obviously highlighted by that second down play. Good job to get a stop there, bring the offense out. Just overall what you want to see from Mason this entire game. You see... Fisher still getting those extra push pushes, so you get them in a third and long situation like that. And Talon Fisher, the quarterback and the punter, doesn't get a lot on that ball. Comet's gonna get the start with great field possession inside of their 40 yard line. So making things easier on the offense. That's honestly in the two Comet losses, that's been a big factor is they've started they, they've lost the field positioning advantage. You know, Gahanna Lincoln often started with the ball inside their own. The other side, 50-yard line, and yeah, Comet sideline getting hyped. That was a perfect first series. They couldn't have drawn it up any better. Great showing here for the last regular season homecoming or home home game, excuse me. And looking at this offense, the guy to know about is Nick Sailors. All five touchdowns last week, and Larson Brown, his third game back from injury, looked so much better last week than he did against West. Hoping to keep that going. Yeah, then Brown in shotgun. He's going to sweep it to Weston Simmons. He's got some blocks, and he's flattened. And the ball's on the ground. Ball's out. Fairfield says that they have it. 
and they do. Wow. And right there, just a normal sweep play. Turns into disaster for the Comets. Great field position. Probably could have led to a score there and stopped on the first play. Fairfield defense comes up big, making a statement right there. And even though it is still super early, that could be a very big deciding factor against Fairfield. You had your opportunity there with the bad punt. You have to take advantage of situations like those. So we'll see Fisher come back out. Yep. Fisher and Jackson in the backfield again. Three receivers out left. Fisher takes it. Play action, and he's going to find his receiver. Isaiah Glover is going to run for a new set of downs, or very close to it. Complete to Isaiah Glover. And he's going to be stopped. Looks like he's going to be called out of bounds just Jackson short of the first down bounds. marker, so second and one. Coming out early, we've seen a little more passing than expected. Not a very heavy passing team, but Fisher, if you need to throw the ball, he's going to get it done. So, yeah, Play action very effective for Fairfield, and they're trying to get that going early. Now second and one, you've got some options. Hand it off. Nope, it's the read option. They've run that a couple plays. Talon Fisher has a lot of room. He's got speed running down the field, and he is gone. Comets can't catch him. There's the running. 56-yard or 56-yard touchdown for Talon Fisher. That breakaway speed is just it's so hard to match that. It you saw Nick Sailors get good pressure on the uh, other side to Jackson would have looked like a loss at first, but being able to get that read option like that, have a quarterback like that, of course leads to lead, leads to GMC and rushing yards just extended that by a by a good bit on that play. Yeah, so the first drive for the Indians was kind of a disaster, and right there, exactly what they wanted. They returned that read option into six points. Fairfield starting out on top, and now a flag called. False start on that extra point attempt. Fisher, who leads the GMC in scoring, that's his 13th rushing touchdown False of the season. Fairfield. No other rusher Fairfield. is within four of that. Yeah, Talon Fisher, man. He's a true talent. There's a reason that a lot of Vision One schools, Miami of Ohio, Buffalo, Massachusetts, they've already offered him. He's getting looks from some other schools too. He's a star in Southwest Ohio football. And the extra point is up. And it's good from the kicker, Aiden McGuire. So Fairfield now takes the seven to nothing lead. Fairfield seven, Mason nothing. And the Comets. I mean, first drive three and out, they get the ball inside Fairfield's 40-yard line. They feel really confident, and all of a sudden, a fumble on the first play totally shifts the momentum. Daniel, how is this common offense going to kind of return to form on this next drive? Well, you don't need to do all those jet sweeps and all that. You saw Nick Sailors last week fully take control, and Sailors isn't the only guy. Tay Hibbett, who had not his greatest game last week, but he still a guy who can easily take over a game. You have a sophomore at running back at varsity, you know it's something special, especially these next few years. He's going to be a top rusher in the hit for Mason football. Just kind of have to see whose day it's going to be today. And if it's not one guy's, one guy's day, the other guy's going to come out, and he's going to do exactly what you need. Yeah. Now McGuire, who just hit that extra point, back for the kickoff. J.C. Deaton and Charlie Raymond back to return the kick. Comet started last drive with great field position. So this return gonna be crucial. It's Fairfield has some confusion. Looked like they're about to make a substitution. And yep, some last minute changes to personnel. A little bit of special teams problem already. We saw on the uh, extra point, a little bit of confusion now here on the kickoff. Yep. Mason sideline trying to keep the energy up after that, that 58 yard touchdown. It's a squib kick. Picked up by Weston Simmons and he's gonna get it just over past the 40 yard line. So good field position for the Comets. The punt was not great, and right there, the kickoff also doesn't get a lot of a distance. 
So Thomas, you know, a little bit easier now. And you were starting to talk about Larson Brown. Now his third game back from a shoulder injury. He didn't even get a chance to show anything. Only a one-play drive right there. And, you know, last week kind of got into his groove. But Sycamore's defense, not the strongest. So the Comets were kind of able to exploit that with Nick Sailors. Today is the day where we want to see Larson Brown, you know, get back to full strength and show off all the talent he has. Really, regardless of the defense, seeing that big of a jump from West to Sycamore last week, huge sign. Yep, and Simmons again, five yards, pushes away for another one, so nice run there on second and ten. Going to set up a more manageable third down. You've got some options here at midfield. Nick Sailors, you give, the, you give him the ball, he's going to end up pushing for those extra two, three, four, five yards. You see they're able to, good job by Fairfield to crash in, but... Sailor's still able to push forward for those extra yards, make it makes it pretty calm third down here. See what Mason can do. Brown takes the snap in the shotgun again, goes to Sailors. He's wrapped up just past the line of scrimmage, still gonna set up a fourth down. Now in Fairfield territory, you can consider going for it here only. Fourth and two. Comet Huddle going to talk it over. Larson Brown looks at the sideline, waiting decision. And it looks like they're going to stay out there. It's definitely a call that can go both ways. You don't want to give Fairfield this field position, but a drive like that, you just let Fairfield take all the momentum, especially off of that one play drive. You get a first down here. Could be a huge yep, and we'll shift see for Mason. If they're just trying to force field, Fairfield offsides they actually take plan to take the snap and they do and Larson Brown play action and he looks for his brother Quinn Brown Brown has some space good block from Ryder and he trucks a guy out inside the 20 Comets in the red zone we ballsy saw, play call there saw a play like Fourth that down. last saw a play like that last week against uh, Sycamore as well I think it was to looking at it Colin Billhorn as well we saw Brown able to evade the pocket had rushers going straight at him didn't have much time it was able to put a throw right on the money there it keeps the drive alive and not only that gets you great amount of yards yeah and these are the plays that the comments have been looking for Larson Brown to make rolling out facing pressure doesn't matter steps into a gutsy throw and right there that's a big play and now Hibbett in the backfield he's going to take the handoff following his blockers and he pushes forward so powerful it's going to be close to a first down. Second and short coming up. And that's only Hibbett's first carry of the game, but something you didn't see much last game, him being able to push forward versus Sycamore. He's getting stopped at the line, not being able to do much. Got it, picked it up a little bit towards the end of the game, which is a very good sign going into tonight. And a few, car few carries we've seen, both running backs could have a pretty big day. Still is very early. Yeah, the strength of this Fairfield defensive line is more with their outside linebackers and defensive ends. So that's something to watch running inside. Brown gonna take the snap again, hands it off to Hibbett and he breaks outside and he's brought down by Kari Bivens and Ray Coney, two of the top, the top tacklers for Fairfield. Yeah, those are two names you wanna watch out for for Mason. Two guys leading the team in tackle basically every stat. So there's a people that you don't run want to run the ball towards. It's those guys. Yeah, and Hibbett tried to break that one outside, but Kari Bivens or Kavi Bivens was able to to shed his block, and then that allowed Coney to get there in time. And now Brown again in the shotgun. Sailors in the backfield, and Brown quick pass to Weston Simmons right at the line of scrimmage and he's going to be short of the sticks. Seen a lot of Weston Simmons on offense so far. Not really known for his receiving but more of his play on defense in the secondary but aside from that fumble on the first play he's been able to get, get yards, get the catches that you know make most of the opportunities of course except for that first play but yeah. you, you look at this Fairfield defense you have four players tied for fifth and fifth in tackles just all over the football field and officials measure again they do give the comments the first down so first and goal from the 10 yard line and Larson Brown gonna run it himself not really known as a dual threat guy but he's athletic enough to make some plays he slides there it's about five yards Good play to just slide there, not risk anything. 
you know, you get the good yards in in very good range right here. And if you saw the cast on that left wrist right there, Larson Brown, he's had multiple injuries this season. You know, earlier in the year, had a wrist injury, and then the, what sidelined him the past couple weeks was a shoulder injury. So another thing that he's got to keep in mind when he's running the ball, doesn't want to aggravate either of those. Now under center for the first time tonight. Sweeps it to Sailors. Sailors bounces outside. He's going to push through for just about a yard. Brought down by Kieran Love. Sets up third and goal from about the four yard line. Almost no matter what happens, you're in fourth down, fourth down range. Especially the way we've seen Fairfield's offense bounce back, the quick play, 58 yard rush, you have to get six here. So whether it's on this play, fourth down, Settling for a field goal is, you know, you get points, but you got to get six. Yep. And some trickery there. They directly snap it to Sailors. And he muffs that snap, so a trick play there ends up not being successful. Sailors frustrated after that. And now you get pushed back a little bit. The field goal unit going to come out. Colson Bunch going to have a chance to put some points on the board. Well, that kind of takes down away down the fourth down fourth going down for it right the there. A little trickery if it works. It's a great play call, but you see something like that. It's just a huge drive killer. But if you're able to just get points here, it's still good for good for Mason. And Simmons snaps it, and Colson Bunch kicks that one right through the uprights. The senior. Makes a field goal on senior night, so Comets get on the board now, only down seven to three, just under four minutes to go in this first quarter. So a very promising drive there from Mason. And that crucial fourth down play. Larson Brown found his brother, Quinn Brown, got them into the red zone. And just being able to put in a good drive like that, go down 40 yards. You know, those 50 yard plays are fun to watch, but being able to quickly Getting a drive like that is great, but being able to do that early in the game is a great sign for Mason being able to get their offense going. You saw the run game working, of course, that big pass to Brown on fourth down. So we're all good signs for Mason. You can see if this defense can bounce back from a huge run last, last drive. Yeah, and it's those chunk plays they're going to need to watch out for. Now Colson Bunch after the field goal. He's going to kick it off. And into the end zone for a touchback. And so now, now Talon Fisher coming back out onto the field. Had the huge 50-plus yard touchdown. And that was the big wake-up last drive. You know Fisher's good, but that play, you saw how good he was, how fast he was. So defensive backs being able to not let anything pass them is big. You just... You know, he's going to run. It's just going to happen. He's the best dual threat quarterback in this, in the GMC. And he's like that for a reason. If he gets past you, he's gone. Yep, and they're going to need to continue to watch that read option. And that just puts a little bit more pressure on the linebackers, Jake Bates, Kai Wolfolk, and even Nick Sailors, who they kind of love to move around in the chess piece on the defense. And Fisher hands it off. And Jackson... It's going to get four yards, and that's going to be another thing that's going to be really critical. If they can get Jackson going in the run game, they know how talented he is. That's just going to make it even harder to zero in on Talon Fisher and you know set up these more manageable second and third down situations where you can kind of lean on Talon Fisher's playmaking ability. Nice one-on-one -on -one tackle there from Bates. Bates, the, the key guy on this defense, the true leader. You know, you were missing him a few weeks ago, and it was very noticeable that you didn't have him. So. Having him back and fully healthy, the biggest guy on this defense. And Fisher fakes the handoff to the man in motion. He's going to run right. And a couple of Mason guys get to him, and he is brought down. Malachi Reed with the shoelace tackle there. That's exactly what you need. Let, make them go backwards, force them to throw the ball. Being able to, we've seen a few plays to the outside so far. Look at the replay here. Wesson Simmons, great job to contain, not bite or anything like that. Good pursuit from the corners. Overall, nothing there for Fairfield. Yeah, Simmons right there just trips up Talon Fisher. That's a big loss. You know, after a good 
First down play, so now third and 10. Makes things interesting. Fisher takes the snap. He drops back to throw. Comet's bringing a lot of pressure. Throws a good ball, and it's intercepted. Sean Krukenberg. Two in He's a row. He's been making plays all season long. Two games in a row, we saw the pick six called back. And he gets his last senior game, senior night. You have an interception on your last homecoming in senior night. You see the replay here. Fisher throws a good ball, but Krukenberg just plays that perfectly, playing that deep zone, jumps the route at the exact right time. Maybe a little bit underthrown, but great to take advantage of the underthrow. Krukenberg, one of the best defensive backs on this team, and gives the Comets their third drive. Great field position once again. Yeah, so that's another swing of momentum right there for Mason. We saw the turnover on the other side of the ball earlier swing things. Now the Comets have a chance to take the lead, and Larson Brown, Tay Hibbett back out on the field. And Brown takes a snap. He's going to drop back to throw. He's going, looking deep, and nobody there, so he's just going to run to the line of scrimmage. You saw him pump, pump fake three times there, so he was obviously trying to go deep. Nothing there, able to get back to the line. May have lost one, but still a good job to not, not force anything downfield, especially well, we just saw that on the last play. Yeah, and these are the plays that Larson Brown's going to miss his favorite target, Braden Greer out today with a hamstring injury, their top receiver on the season. And you know, Larson Brown, was, that's normally his top deep threat and couldn't find anybody on that play. Just had to settle for two yards. And Hibbett takes the handoff. Patience in the backfield makes a jump cut and he's gonna get past the 50 yard line. You mentioned Greer out. One guy we haven't really heard much of today already is Jack Ryder. He had such a very good game last week against uh, Sycamore, so. With guys like that, you're going to need Colin Billhorn, Jack Ryder, everybody like that to be able to step up with, you know, your, your number one receiver goes down. It's never easy to replace, but Mason, very good receiving core, so just got to see how they can go with that. Yeah, and a guy I'm watching today, we already called his name once, but Larson's brother, Quinn Brown, the tight end receiver hybrid. Look for him to continue to step up. And now Brown rolls out to his right, facing some pressure. Makes a quick throw. And they're going to say Zach Adlita caught that one out of bounds, didn't have possession. So sets up fourth and four. And the Comets went for it on a similar situation. On their last drive, they had some success. But here, they're going to opt Yeah, you don't want to get too greedy. I think it's a good idea to just punt here. You have the momentum on defense, just got the interception. You, know, you don't want to give Fairfield the ball on your side of the field, so Krukenberg, the punter and returner, um, you know, if you're able to just pin him down here at the one. David yeah, Krukenberg, and it's a fake. We've seen them run it a couple times this season. Tammy Adesanya gives him a great block. And Sean Kuchenberg picks up the first down. He had an interception that gave the Comets possession here. And then right there, picks up the first down with a fake play. We talk about two games in a row with the interception for Kuchenberg. Two games in a row with a fake punt. And a couple great blocks here. The big one coming from the linebacker, Kai Wolfolk. Uh, there's a little bit of correction there. Had that big block. And Sean Kuchenberg just follows the blockers and... Easy first down right there. You could have walked for it. So you love to see that if you're the Comets. They've called that a couple times this year, and defenses haven't really adjusted to it. It's been open a lot of the time. They love calling it around midfield. But like I say, you have a great athlete there at punter. It's almost easy to do stuff like that. Mm -hmm. and now Brown hands it off to Sailor. Some patience, jump cuts, and he's brought down by Next Bivens. Bivens, we talk about the best defender on this team going into today, 46 total tackles, seven and a half tackles for loss everywhere around the field. As we mentioned, tied for fifth going into tonight with um, in tackles with 46 as we talk about. Yep, and now time ticking down here in the first quarter. This is gonna be likely the last play of the quarter unless it's a quick incompletion. And now Brown back to take the snap. He's got Sailors with him. And he's going to hand it off. Sailors trying to push his way forward for the first down. 
It's going to be close. That wraps up the first quarter. And they're going to call Sailors just short. So when we get back for the second quarter, Comets are going to have a third and short. And it was a great, very competitive first quarter. A lot of action, a couple turnovers, some trick plays. Uh, we'll be back with you for the second quarter, so stick around. Responsibly. Before going out, check for closures and fire restrictions. Practice social distancing, even when outside and on the trail. Back at home with burning yard debris, keep your pile small. And no matter where you are, be sure to properly extinguish any outdoor fire. Drown, stir, drown, feel. We're all in this together. Help keep our safe places safe. ICRC TV Sports. Three pointer. Got it. In for the Comet score. Win. Three to Comet win. Yeah. So you're doing pretty good. And we are back here. Second quarter. Comets have a third and two. It's Larson Brown. Hands it off to Nick Sailors, and he's going to push his way forward for that first down. So Comets pick up the conversion right there. Talk about this running, running back duo, two very good power backs. You need those few yards you put in Sailors. You need those big plays. You have Hibbit exactly for those situations, and Sailors doing what he does best, getting those short yards, extending the drive. It's first down for Mason. And we're also seeing a lot of Weston Simmons on offense today. Normally a safety. He does play some running back, but they're using him almost as a slot receiver today. So, Well, like we say, with uh, with Greer out, you need yeah. somebody to step up. Yeah, we they're getting Brown creative. Step up. Creatives are going to win as long as it's good. Brown under center. Hibbit in the backfield. Brown takes the snap. Fakes to Hibbit, and he's got a guy in his eye. And... The play is still alive. They're going to call that a fumble or some, confu like some confusion there. One of the refs called it dead. The other said it was live, and they're going to say like that's an incompletion. Josh Mapin on there. Great job to get the tip ball there. We've seen a lot of rolling out from Larson Brown so far, so just all you can ask for from a, from a defensive lineman there. Not really pursue the sack you see him going so get a hand on it yep and the bread and butter of the Fairfield offense is to play action the Comets have tried to establish that today and plays like that are going to help Fairfield stop it when you have your big D lineman shedding tack shedding blocks and making stops now Brown hands it off to Hibbit and he's not going to go very far hey, I haven't seen Hibbert really get to the outside at all. The one play I really remember from last week where he did get to the outside, threw a Sycamore guy right onto the turf on a huge stiff arm, get, went in for the touchdown, was called back, but you let Hibbert get to the outside on a one-on-one, -on -one, the defender's just not going to win. Yeah, and here on third and ten, Comet's probably going to be forced to pass as they put Nick Sailors, their third down back out there. They've got four receivers out. Or Quentin Kaler, the tight end, is lined up kind of as a receiver in motion. And Brown drops back, clean pocket. He finds Sailors in a drop. And Sailors going to be really, really frustrated with himself, himself after that one. May have been thinking about that getting the first down there. Down. First, you just got to catch the ball. Yeah, got a little had a bit of a head himself. Maybe was looking towards the end zone. There was some green grass in front of him, especially after last week when he had you know, five touchdowns. And they're in a spot where this is four down territory, so right there you didn't even need the first down. And now fourth and ten at the 29. It is fourth and – yeah, but that's the thing. It's fourth and ten. Yeah, but at the 29-yard line, it's a little too far for a field goal. You're not punting it from here. You're not losing much if going for it here. Browns look good today, being able to get the ball deep downfield. And he takes it. A little bit of a high snap recovers. Throws it to his running back, Sailors, and he's got some space on the edge. First down, Nick Sailors. 
There we go. After the drop, Nick Saylor is able to redeem himself there on the screen. He's touchdown, so play that's really been working. Nick Saylor's might be in for a big game. And the Comets just decided they don't want to punt today. They've gone for it twice, twice on fourth down in addition. And they called him just short. What? Stepped out of bounds before he passed the first down. Wow. Passed the first down marker. Comets thought they had it. You could see a lot us of, too. You saw a lot of confusion from Sailors there. Not exactly sure what was going on, but that's what happened. So, so that's a big swing of momentum now. Fairfield. Fairfield gets a back huge, out there. Huge break there. Yeah, and where they where they marked the ball was literally inches short of the first down marker. Sailors steps out of bounds just too early. Now Talon Fisher hands the ball off. And a massive stop from Bryce Falk. A little bit of a delayed handoff there. You can see him bobble the snap a little bit. May have got him by a, just a step, but that could really be everything in, in a run. And yeah, the Comets now kind of backed up in the Fairfield possession. This defense needs to make a statement. You thought you were going to have the first down there. You thought we were going to score some points. And really, other than that big touchdown run, this defense has been able to contain Fisher very well so far. Really contain everything well. Yep, and now Fisher in the shotgun. He's going to take the snap, hands it off there, and stuffed again. Comet defense been terrific. Jordan Jackson. Same play, same Stopped result. Caden Davis. Caden Davis there on the tackle. One of the leading tacklers for Mason, the best player up front on the interior. Just able to crash through the middle, not let Fairfield get anything there. Yeah, Caden Davis in the past has been more of an edge rusher. This year they moved him inside and he's been productive. He's got a lot of, he's got some Division I offers, so he's a player to con keep, continue to keep an eye on. Talon Fisher, he's scrambling, was looking for the de pass downfield, and he still throws it and he finds his receiver. What a play. That is a Division I play right there. Rolling out, looks like he's going to scramble just before he gets back to the line of scrimmage, chucks it. Only thing going through my mind during that play is throw it away, but you have a guy like that able to just extend it. And what a throw there on the run by the sideline. Yeah, that's a that's a division one kind of play right there. Referees, they throw a flag. Late flag, very late. Yeah, so they were discussing something right after that play ended. Fairfield never crossed. You know, the the officials signaled a fair or a, a completed catch, but Fairfield never moved, the chains never moved. So a penalty is going to push Fairfield back. And now they're going to be forced to punt. So you get a break there for Mason. Fairfield gets the break on that really close fourth down call. Mason gets it right back. Yeah, so what it was was the receiver ran out of bounds on his route, probably assumed that Talon Fisher was just going to hold on to it, scramble, and then came back into the play and catch it. You know, if, you, if you're forced out, if the receiver's forced out of bounds by a defender, he is allowed to come back into the play. If he goes out under his own will, he's ineligible for the rest of that play. So that's why it's going to be fourth down. So not a penalty, so yeah. So not a, you know, an unnecessary roughness or anything after the play like we initially thought. Even though he is taken back, your Fisher, that is the play to put in a highlight reel. Yeah, right there. Re really, really good play. He had pressure from the moment he, caught, he uh, took the snap. I'm still able to make something out of it. But you know, disappointing drive for Fairfield, another three and out. Outside of that 50-plus yard down, touchdown, down it's, down it's been the Comets defense that's been doing most of the, most of the playmaking. There's not many quarterbacks that can even get in that situation. We talk about how good of a runner he is, but you have that good of a runner, he's not going to get sacked too often, able to extend, fortunately, legal touching. Yeah, so Talon Fisher, also the punter, and it's a fake, and he's going to throw it now, and just barely misses his target, Isaiah Glover. And so Daniel actually had in his notes today that Talon Fisher, the punter, also the quarterback, watch out for some fakes, and we hadn't talked about it yet because we didn't think they were in a field position where you could go for a fake, and right there, I can't believe they called it, honestly, probably right there, yeah. 
fourth and 19 backed up in, you know, within the 20 of your own side of the field. Most likely it was a botched snap there. Something blew up. Fisher didn't like. Fortunately, Talon Fisher is no Sean Krukenberg. Yeah, Talon Fisher does <laughs> not convert there. Or they're actually going to redo this play. Yeah. So Krukenberg takes the punt and down right around the 50. Krukenberg on punt returns has been super aggressive, especially against Sycamore last week. No fair catches. There were a few, almost all the punts were good coverage by Sycamore, but he still, you know, he doesn't care. He's just going to take the ball and get whatever he can out of it. And super aggressive returner, and that's what you're going to need. Yeah, now Comets again having good field position, and that is so so critical in a close game like this. Haven't had a drive yet where you're starting deep inside your territory of the field, but. Yeah, an opposite, Fairfield hasn't had a drive where they've started in good positioning except for the, the one when they had, they forced a fumble. So, Comets been in good position. Larson Brown takes the snap, drops back to throw, clean pocket. He finds his target, that's Colin Billhorn. He's targeting a couple times tonight, the slot receiver. Larson He's looking to Brown. step up in his buddy. Braden Greer's absence. What a throw there from Brown. He was able to get a bunch of zip on the ball. See the replay here, clean pocket. Right where, right where Bill Horn needed it. Yeah, Bill Horn had some double coverage, uh, but Larson Brown places that ball exactly where it needs to be, like you said. Put some zip on the ball. Still haven't heard the throw. Still haven't heard Jack Ryder's name yet. Nope. And Kaler in motion, but Brown just going to hand it off to hit it. And he's going to get stopped. And Daniel, part of the reason we probably haven't heard Jack Ryder's name so far is Josiah Jackson, their lockdown cornerback going to West Virginia, has him manned up on the other side of the field. So they've been putting Ryder and Jackson on an island and then kind of using their safeties to, to stop the other receivers. And you have to imagine Jackson would have been matched up with Greer if he was playing today. It's a matchup before I heard that he was out that I was really looking forward to, but with how Ryder's getting locked down, great job from guys like um, Bill Horn to step up. And right here, Jackson is going to be on Bill Horn, and they're going to run a sweep. Nick Sailors is going to get just a couple yards, <laughs> setting up a third and medium. Getting, didn't get as much space right there as he would have liked. Third and eight, so not a very generous spot from the referees. And this is a spot right here where you don't need the first down. You just need to get a couple yards because you're getting close to four down territory at the 36-yard line. Three, four yards here uh, gets you in a, a spot where you're comfortable going for it on fourth. And now Larson Brown back with Nick Sailors. He's going to take the snap, facing a lot of pressure. And right there. Yeah, the late flag had it in his hand. And that's likely going to be some pass interference. Jack Ryder was draped in coverage. Still, Larson Brown delivered an accurate throw, which is impressive considering how much pressure he was facing. First time we hear Jack Ryder's name, flag on Fairfield. So Yeah, and he was defended right there by Xavier Isaacs, their other quarterback. So the officials meeting here to discuss the, the official call. It's been a relatively clean game this half. No big, no big. Um, yeah, and it is pass interference. The Comets going to get a new set of downs. Yeah, the only the penalties we've seen are the pass interference pass right there, and then earlier the uh, when touching. the yeah the illegal touching when the receiver went out of the out of the field of play, and then came back in. So a clean First game so far. Uh, which is always good to see when you have two rivals. You don't. You and now Larson Brown. Nick Sailors, he's got Weston Simmons in motion. And Brown, clean pocket again. Throws it to Ryder right away. And Isaacs gets his revenge. As soon as Ryder touched the ball, he knocked it down. He gets a nice pass break up there. Talk about the penalties. Larson Last week Brown against Sycamore, Mason was Jack able to Ryder take advantage of the penalties. So being able to keep a clean I mean, game, any game it's going to be helpful, but especially in ter territory like this where Mason is, can't have any big flags like that. Yep, so a couple drops already in the game for the Comets. 
We'll see if they prove detrimental again. Larson Brown, big snap, but Fairfield jumps off sides. And there's the penalty. Yeah, I believe that was the D lineman, James Thomas, as he checks off the field. See the Comets catch another break as they're now going to get second and five instead of second and ten. That really opens up your playbook on second down. Just You're much more likely to run it now. Just barely six minutes and 30 seconds. Mason's still looking for their first touchdown. If you're able to get it here, Fairfield will get the ball going into the second half. So if you're able to take the lead. Or no, 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 no. I'm sorry. Mason gets yeah. the ball. Comets will have possession after the half. So you score a touchdown here. Get another stop on defense. You could potentially have a couple score lead. And right here, set in second and medium. They do opt to run it. Uh, not to much success, though. As Sailors gets maybe a yard, third and four. And so again, Comet's probably in four down territory here. Haven't been forced to punt yet. Every time it's fourth down, Jordan, it's forcing Jordan, just a few. Stop for and Indians. we've seen fourth and just a few really just is, especially if you're putting the punting team out there. Yeah, it's very manageable. And right here on third and four, you've got some options. And Jordan Fairfield's now, defense four. has been pretty squishy so far. They're playing. They're giving the, the receivers some space, and Larson Brown has been attacking the quick game, making those quick passes in the flats, and we'll see if they go there again. Tight end Kaler in motion. Larson Brown being blitzed. He's scrambling, and he's going to hold on to it, needs to throw that one away, and doesn't. And just a it's free a big rusher loss. there. And he went down hard. Struggles to get back up. Jojo Baker broke through. So you see the replay here. Jordan Baker, the linebacker, gets right through the center and drags Larson Brown down. His helmet nearly came off. Walking off a little wobbly, but he is able to run off, so hopefully let's get the wind knocked out of him a little bit. Yeah, looked like it there. Now Colson Bunch is coming out to kick a 38-yard field goal. This would be the longest of his career. Kick is up. At the distance. And it's good. So two field goals for Colson Bunch. This is his first year playing football. And now he's keeping the Comets in the game with his kicking. Senior night there, the, the Comet crowd excited. You know, you're able to get points out of that with the blown third down. Now, huge drive. Fairfield is up by one. Most likely the last drive Fairfield will get this half. So here Mason only limiting them to seven points. This first half, if you're able to keep that, especially with the ball going into halftime, gotta go in with some sort of momentum. You can't allow another 60 yard run. Yeah, and if I'm Fairfield, as much as I'm frustrated with the lack of offense so far, you know, obviously outside of the one big play, you've gotta be content with the fact that Mason only has six points on the board, considering they've had the ball, you know, in Fairfield territory almost every possession. They've had the ball in the red zone a couple times. It's a miracle that they don't have a couple touchdowns, you know, and Fairfield's had a couple breaks. In your Fairfield, you still have a lot of time to put together a drive. There's no need to rush, no need. Anything like that for a 60-yard touchdown would be nice, but. Common offense, though, they, they've got to be frustrated. They've been in positions to score points. They've, got, they've driven down the field, just not able to close so far. Except for the first drive, they've been able to put drives together. It's just about finishing off, capitalizing on points. You've been able to get the field goals, but you got to, the game's about getting six. Now Bunch with the kickoff. And this one a little shorter, not quite a touchback. And going to be returned to about the 25-yard line. The Comet kickoff returned by the Indians. See what Fairfield does here. Seen a little more passing than usual this half. A little less of the read options or the quarterback draws. See if they go back to that. That's where the run game for Fisher has been working. Those just up the middle runs. Yeah, Fisher. They've been leaning on the read option so far today. And we'll see if he goes there as he hands it off. He takes a snap. Drops back to throw. He's going deep. 
and an accurate, pretty accurate ball hit the hands of his target, Isaiah Glover, but great coverage. Double coverage throw, pretty accurate. He's not able to get it. Good defense there from Mason, you see on the replay. Yeah, JC Deaton made a nice pass break up there, uses speed to stay, stay with Glover, and then finished off the play, but the Comets also had some pressure there. Malachi Reed, gotcha at the quarterback. So Talon Fisher muffs that snap. It's balls on the ground. Comets trying to pick it up. Nobody seeming able to get there. And Fairfield gets it. And that's a missed opportunity. Seen a few pretty bad snaps so far, both sides. Fairfield able to get a huge break of getting the ball there. Tyler Wilson nearly had it. He just slides right past the ball. You know, Talon Fisher, that bounced off his hands immediately after the snap. Comets had a chance there to not just get the ball, but to get it within the red zone. You know, you expect a little more of the bobbly kind of receives from the center with the weather starting to dip lower and lower as the game goes on. We've seen a few of that already. Good Fisher takes this one and be forced to pass on third and long, facing a lot of pressure now. He gets to run. This is where he's comfortable. Pushed out of bounds, though by Kai Wolfolk. And so now, it'll be fourth and medium. Mike Higgins. If you're Fairfield, you've got a punt here. Well, and this is definitely a spot where you want to punt, but when you've got a quarterback like Talon Fisher, especially when he's your punter, you can consider the fake play here. But just under, you know, about three and a half minutes left in this half, you don't want to give up any field position to the Commons and allow them Higgins to take the lead heading into halftime. You can't give up any more momentum than you already have. We've already oh, yeah. seen a fake from Fairfield already. And look at, if you just look at Talon Fisher's body language, you can tell he's frustrated with the way he, he and his offense are playing right now. And he's gonna punt it, and this one's a lot better than his first punt. Picked up by Krukenberg, and goes down the sideline, and a little bit past the 40 yard line. So the Comets gonna have three minutes to go about 60 yards down the field trying to take the lead. He got a couple of yards before. They're able to get the ball back. Three minutes out. left. You've been able to put together a great drive so far. You have all three timeouts as well. No team has taken a timeout three so far. Pretty quick half. half. You're down by one. You've been able to give line. field goals, even getting a field goal, just taking the lead somehow the going into half and then getting the ball back. Big drive for Mason. See what they do. Now comments. Weston Simmons in motion. Three receivers out wide. Brown drops back. Throwing deep for Quinton Kaler. And just the ball placement a little bit off. That ball sails out of bounds. So now second and ten. This past few minutes we've seen a lot of deep shots from both teams. Last drive, the Fairfield double coverage shot. No team has really been able to capitalize much on the deep ball except for that one fourth down where Brown was able to get it to Brown on for first drive, being able to set up great field position. But other than that, good defense so far from each team in the secondary. And so now, the Comets under center. Hand it off to Sailors, and he's got some room. He's going down, he's got some space, he's got speed. At the 10 yard line, at the five, touchdown Nick Sailors. Again, last week, five touchdowns. Today on senior night, picks up his ninth on the year. What a play from Nicholas Sailors. And that's six straight touchdowns. Last six from Mason. Nick Sailors being able to get the breakaway speed to the edge. How about these past two games from Nick Sailors? He got chased down, but that wasn't enough. Nick Sailors, just enough of a stride there to pick up the touchdown. And now three minutes left in the set in the second quarter. That's a huge swing of momentum. This Comet sideline re-energized by that. You saw the sideline right there going absolutely wild. And Colson bunches extra point is good. So now the Comets take a 13 to 7 lead with three minutes and four seconds left in the first half. 
there's a touchdown that you needed. We've been talking about it, able to put together the great drives, but both touchdowns so far from each team, one big 50-yard run and another big run. So run game has really been, honestly, both run and pass game for both teams has been very good so far. Yeah. Just been able to get their one big run that they've needed. And that play right there is what the comments have been waiting for and what I've been waiting to see from them. Honestly, they've been the better team all night outside of a couple Talon Fisher plays that, you know, just show why he's such a highly touted recruit. The comments have been dominant on both sides of the ball. Their run game's been more effective. Their pass game's been more effective. And the scoreboard wasn't showing it in there finally break away for the big play. Especially with this defense, it's gotta mean a little more. Almost every starter on this defense is a senior, your last senior night, your last home game against a division rival like Fairfield. There's gotta be a little more energy than just regular game. Yeah, been a, that kickoff, a little short from Bunch. Fairfield gonna start with the ball around the 34 yard line. So now, the Comets, you know, obviously you're happy with the big play touchdown. You're never going to say no to seven points, especially at this point in the game. But they scored a little quickly. You know, we were expecting Mason to maybe run out the rest of the half with that possession. Now Fairfield has enough time to go down and score a touchdown of their own if, if they uh, are able to. Yeah, much different drive than we so we've seen. As you said, we expected them to kind of get the clock down, score right before half. But Nick Saylor's had something to say about that. But... You almost wondered, did you give Fisher too much time? Yeah, and if this was the fourth quarter with three minutes left, I think we'd be having a bit of a different conversation there about scoring early. We saw with the Bengals-Ravens game earlier, but now second quarter, you're just happy with it. And uh, Jordan, Jordan Jackson, Jackson takes up about three yards there. No need to bring up that game. <laughs> I love drawing some NFL parallels whenever I see them. And you know, scoring too early around the half or the quarter, you know, sometimes comes back to bite teams. I don't think it's going to hurt the Comets here, but you never know. Especially with how this defense has been playing F Fairfield. You know, they're known for their offense racking up the scoreboard. They haven't been able to put together a very big drive at all yet. Yeah, and now Fisher again back. And really, they haven't been able to get Jordan Jackson, er, Jackson going. And now Fisher with the read option. He's got some space. Breaks a tackle and brought down at the 50-yard line but they need Jordan Jackson to get going. Every time he's getting it, it's four yards max. You know, the Comets have been, have been good about stuffing the run. The only time that Fairfield's offense is moving is when Talon Fisher takes a read option and gets out into space. Right now, they're one-dimensional. And the Comets, when you have a defense as talented as Mason, they can stop one-dimensional in there. Just the speed from yeah. Fisher. There are two big plays to touchdown, read option. This is their, probably their second biggest play on offense so far, the read option. And he's gonna take the snap. Fakes the handoff, throws the quick pass, and overthrows his target. That was Isaiah Glover again down the field. He and had him yeah, too. he had him. That would have been a touchdown. Glover had a lot of space. He beat Zach Rogers down the field, but Talon, Talon Fisher trying to get the ball out quick. Just a little off target. Him a little bit. A few breaks. We've seen a little bit of inconsistency so far in the passing game from Fisher. Just a few plays so far where it's like if you can get that right there, it can be a completely different game. Yeah, Fisher now on second down. Again, takes it for himself and picks up about six yards. He does that so well, fighting through that extra yardage, using that strength. This is the first time really that we've seen Fairfield be able to put together a big drive. A read option once again. That's how they're getting their big yards. So you're Mason. That's the play that you probably circled going into the week. Is that read option? And a lot of energy right now uh, in this at Dwyer Field senior night. So potentially the last home game of the season. Definitely the last home game of the regular season for Mason. And a lot of community support today. It was a pink out in the common student section. like we got a timeout from Fairfield. Yeah, Fairfield now on third and four, trying to keep this drive alive. Potentially four down territory here. They want, they need to get points on the board. Mason gonna start the second half with the ball. Yeah, you really just need to end it off with points. You get something close here. It really is four down territory. You have enough time on the clock, just barely under two minutes. Don't have to panic or anything like that yet. 
But with Mason getting the ball, you field goal would be nice, but seven would be a lot better. And, oh, <laughs> and a Fairfield receiver just jumps that snap a little bit, got aggressive, and literally fell over. Daniel, I, I used to be a swimmer, and I can remember up on up on the starting blocks that happens sometimes, you get a little anxious and you fall in the water. That's exactly what that looked like. Number eight just fell flat onto his stomach trying to anticipate the snap. Uh, that's a play that you want to forget. Absolutely. It's cost his team five yards now. Instead of third and four, it's third and nine. So that's a big difference, especially when you're you know, positioned potentially in four down territory and just falls over. Any chance we get a read option here? And oh. Fisher drops back snap, looking down the field. And nearly an amazing one-handed catch. Another throw from Fisher just a little bit high. That's been the ongoing theme of the passing game so far. Hoping the second half you could start the to get the accuracy a little better. But there's just the another play the where if you're receiver, able to get that, it's gonna be, it would be a first down. But punting unit out now see if maybe they fake yeah and right there that's just that's back-to-back -back missed opportunities you know third and four that's four down territory then right there you've got a guy open goes for the fancy catch doesn't get in Fisher with his best punt of the night so far Krukenberg gonna field that one about the 13 yard line in just a minute over a minute and a half left in the game in the half for the Comet offense I think that's the first time I've seen Sean Krukenberg call for a fair catch Especially last week against Sycamore, that was a lot of the coverage that he saw on punts, and he just didn't care. He just took it and got the yards that he needed, but able to keep it safe, especially right against your goal line. Don't want to risk anything. Yeah, now Comet offense will see how aggressive or conservative they choose to be. Just late in the first half, Larson Brown under center and going to hand it off to Hibbet. He's going to get it. Decent checky yardage there. The and there's a fall forward from Hibbett we've seen a lot more of today. The first hit able to just go through it. And right there, he does not look like a sophomore. He is built for a running back, the perfect size for a power back, you know, over six feet tall. Looked like Hibbett was build. moving his leg a little bit, a little weirdly, may have gotten a little shaken up after that play. Mallory and now Larson Brown Sophia under Mariano. center again Hibbet in the backfield they hand it off to the sophomore he's going to power his way for a first down and so now just about 46 seconds left hey, looks like they're just gonna first half. looks like they're just going to run out the he clock most likely yeah potentially but now that you've got that first down you do have a, a bit of more of an open playbook. You can try to take a shot downfield, but the clock continues to run, so the Comets leaning on the conservative side. But Larson Brown has the arm strength to make a play down the field. The question is, you know, are the playmakers going to be able to win downfield against some of these these uh, defensive backs? Clock just now dips under 30. And now Brown looking downfield for Ryder, and Ryder with the comeback route there. He's going to pick up the first down and get out of bounds. So 17 seconds left. It's another play action from Brown and able to put it right on the money right there. And Ryder, when he was bringing down that catch, did not have possession. So right there was a good ball from Brown, but not going to convert. It's going to be second and 10 again. Or 17 seconds left doesn't feel like there's really any need to force anything. No, you don't want to have an unnecessary turnover and kind of swing the momentum. You know, you've already got things going your way. Defense playing strong. Big touchdown from Nick Sailors earlier. And now, hands it off to Sailors and he's brought down immediately. And James Thomas knocks him down. And now the Comets James just going to let the clock run down. We've heard a lot of Thomas in the backfield so far today as we just now get into halftime. And yeah, Comets heading into halftime. They have a lead 13 to 7 over Fairfield. Nick Sailors had the big touchdown a few minutes back to give the Comets the lead. Their defense playing well. And we'll be back with all the second half action for this closely contested GMC matchup.
So stay tuned. Jordan knows he shouldn't eat this entire bowl of nachos, but tonight he's earned that right. Because a few hours ago in the middle of happy hour, he recognized a sign. Not from the gods or a bolt of lightning, but from a double heart, a kissy face, and a fourth ha in ha ha ha. That's when Jordan knew he was buzzed. So when it was time to go, he got a ride home instead of driving. Be a legend like Jordan. Recognize your buzzed warning signs and get a ride home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. someone go didn't it come from you guys strangers cough at me move away from me someone spit towards my direction all the stereotypes that we've worked so hard to break are just going to be reversed and i won't let that happen we all have to play our part did i donate my plasma i've been making masks we deserve respect as much as everybody else i'm a firefighter not a virus i'm a mask maker not a virus I'm a nurse. I'm a delivery woman. A chef. A neighbor. Artist. Bus driver. I'm a doctor. Fight the virus. Fight the virus. Play Eric Amarola's Race Day Mix. community. This is ICRC TV. Jordan knows he shouldn't eat this entire bowl of nachos, but tonight he's earned that right. Because a few hours ago in the middle of happy hour, he recognized a sign. Not from the gods or a bolt of lightning, but from a double heart, a kissy face, and a fourth ha in ha ha ha. That's when Jordan knew he was buzzed. So when it was time to go, he got a ride home instead of driving. Be a legend like Jordan. Recognize your buzz warning signs and get a ride home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. I hear someone go, didn't it come from you guys? Strangers cough at me. Move. Hello, everyone, and welcome to ICRC TV Sports. Three-pointer. Got it. In for the Comet score. Win. Three to Comet win. Yeah. We could find a way to get inside each other's minds. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Well, before you abuse, criticize, and accuse, walk a mile in my shoes. Spending time outdoors has never felt more valuable, whether it's exploring nature or relaxing in your yard. Let's do it responsibly. Before going out, check for closures and fire restrictions. Practice social distancing, even when outside and on the trail. Back at home with burning yard debris, keep your pile small. And no matter where you are, be sure to properly extinguish any outdoor fire. Drown, stir, drown, feel. We're all in this together. Help keep our safe places safe. ICRC TV Sports. Three pointer. Got it. In for the Comet score. Win. Three to Comet win. Yeah.
I could be you, and you could be me for just one hour. If we could find a way to get inside each other's minds. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Well, before you abuse, criticize, and accuse, walk a mile in my shoes. Spending time outdoors has never felt more valuable. Whether it's exploring nature or relaxing in your yard, let's do it responsibly. Before going out, check for closures and fire restrictions. Practice social distancing, even when outside and on the trail. Back at home with burning yard debris, keep your pile small. And no matter where you are, be sure to properly extinguish any outdoor fire. Drown, stir, drown, feel. We're all in this together. Help keep our safe places safe. ICRC TV Sports. Three pointer. Got it. In for the Comet score. Win. Three to Comets win. Other's mind. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Well, before you abuse, criticize, and accuse, walk a mile in my shoes. On air or online, this is media for your community. This is ICRC TV. There's no better feeling than to be a part of a fire department. This is a family. Police officer, it's, it's a great job. It really is. Um, you never know what you're going to get. Um, you never know who you're going to help. We're forgetting what's going on outside. We're focusing on what's going on in here. And we're all family. This idea of a family academy, connecting families to talk about relevant issues. Unbelievable. Milford has stormed all the way back in this football game. The Warriors win the state finals! State finals! Ohio Wesleyan, here we go! And it's up to every one of you all to keep this going and carry the torch. I hope you will do that. Thank you. ICRC TV. to get humans to Mars. Really tall, huh? I'm a rocket structural engineer designing and building parts of the rocket. You are the generation that will be stepping foot on Mars. Do I have a group of astronauts on my hands? Yes. You can become a rocket scientist or whatever else you want to be.
you go. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to ICRC TV Sports. Three pointer. Got it. In for the Comet score. Three to Comet win. Yeah. Jordan knows he shouldn't eat this entire bowl of nachos, but tonight he's earned that right. Because a few hours ago in the middle of happy hour, he recognized a sign. Not from the gods or a bolt of lightning, but from a double heart, a kissy face, and a fourth ha in ha ha ha. That's when Jordan knew he was buzzed. So when it was time to go, he got a ride home instead of driving. Be a legend like Jordan. Recognize your buzzed warning signs and get a ride home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. If I could be you, then you could be me for just one hour. If we could find a way to get inside each other's minds. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk, Walk a, a mile, mile in my shoes. shoes. Well, before you abuse, criticize, and accuse. Walk, Walk a mile in my shoes. someone go didn't it come from you guys strangers cough at me move away from me someone spit towards my direction all the stereotypes that we've worked so hard to break are just going to be reversed and i won't let that happen we all have to play our part did i donate my plasma i've been making masks we deserve respect as much as everybody else i'm a firefighter not a virus i'm a mask maker not a virus i'm a nurse i'm a delivery woman chef a neighbor artist bus driver i'm a doctor fight, fight the, the virus, virus. Fight, fight the, the virus, virus. your house a reality. Homeschooling yourself on loans, color coding listings, and flushing every toilet in a 20 mile radius. If you can ace house hunting, you can do it for retirement. Get on track with tips at aceyourretirement.org. Race day mix. Three, two, one. Spending time outdoors has never felt more valuable, whether it's exploring nature or relaxing in your yard. Let's do it responsibly. Before going out, check for closures and fire restrictions. Practice social distancing, even when outside and on the trail. Back at home with burning yard debris, keep your pile small. And no matter where you are, be sure to properly extinguish any outdoor fire. Drown, stir, drown, feel. We're all in this together. Help keep our safe places safe. The next item on our agenda is item number five, opening session. I want to thank everyone for joining us this evening. If you're out here at the parade or listening, thank you again. Into the end zone, and that is caught by Jaden Wood. Come on now, how we doing? Y'all feeling all right out there? Hello, and welcome to this edition of This is Glendale. I'm Bet Chorus. Hey guys, this is Neil Hornford, one long part of the group. I just want to wish you guys a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. 
And of course, you can always go to icrctv.com. Always a great day when ICRC is involved. Another edition of ICRC bringing the community to you. Observe a domesticated human family in their natural habitat, known to their species as the backyard. Hey, you think I should light it now? Yeah. Yeah. Oh dear, someone is about to burn a pile of debris that's too tall, which can start a wildfire. Wait, could it be? Blimey, oh, it is. It's Smokey. It's Smokey Bear. What a legend. Hey, it's Smokey. Sorry, it was too high. Right. Watch as he astutely ensures that there's no wind and how he removes some of the debris to create a smaller, safer burning pile. Well, you see, make it no, you said make it bigger, baby. The bigger, the better. Take note right. of our fearless right. furry friend here, right. humans. I appreciate it. First bump. <laughs> Watch it here. Smokey's done it again. Bye, Smokey. Only you can prevent wildfires. Always a great day when ICRC is involved. Another edition of ICRC bringing the community to you. On air or online, this is media for your community. This is ICRC TV. There's no better feeling than to be a part of a fire department. This is a family. Police officer, it's, it's a great job, it really is. Um, you never know what you're gonna get. Um, you never know who you're gonna help. We're forgetting what's going on outside. We're focusing on what's going on in here, and we're all family. This idea of a family academy, connecting families to talk about relevant issues. Unbelievable, Milford has stormed all the way back in this football game. The Warriors win the state finals! State finals, Ohio Wesleyan, here we go! And it's up to every one of you all to keep this going and carry the torch. I hope you will do that. Thank you. ICRC TV. about physics. Come on in, girl. Let's go. This is the first rocket to get humans to Mars. Really tall. 
I'm a rocket structural engineer designing and building parts of the rocket. You are the generation that will be stepping foot on Mars. Do I have a group of astronauts on my hands? Yes. You can become a rocket scientist or whatever else you want to be. Thank you. Thank you. And we are back here for the second half as the Comets currently lead 13 to 7 over the Fairfield Indians. And the Comets started things off with a field goal. Fairfield had the first touchdown of the night. Talon Fisher, their star quarterback, ran for a 55 yarder. And then Comets. Colson Bunch hit a 40-yard field goal to make it 7-6. And then Nick Sailors closed out the second quarter with a 50-yard touchdown of his own. So the Comets have been the better team so far tonight, but pretty close on the scoreboard. Fairfield has been able to kind of have a bend, don't break all defense so far. Yeah, I'm Andrew Little here with Daniel. And Daniel, you kind of have a breakdown of last half. Yeah, the two big things from that half was defense and long runs. We saw the two touchdowns, one from each team on big, uh, on big runs. But every everything else has been either a good drive put together and can't execute it, or just great defense in general. We've seen Mason's defense able to keep Fisher in check, basically this whole running group in check, except for a few read options, but. It's looked really good for Mason going in to the second half. You're getting the ball and you're up by six, able to make this a two-point game with even just a field goal this shot. Yeah, and Comets do have a lot of momentum. They're going to return this kickoff. So starting the, uh, the half with the ball. They can get a touchdown here, even a field goal, but it's definitely a touchdown. And they could potentially run away with this ball game. We saw a couple weeks ago, Dakota West, tight game at the half. And then West ran away with things. The Comets are going to try to do that right here. Charlie Raymond is going to take the kickoff. And he's dragged down just past the 20 yard line. He's fighting, staying up there, but eventually brought down about the 24. So now Larson Brown is going to trot out there, the quarterback. He's been solid so far tonight. And so far this, so far in the first half, everybody has been solid on this offense. Nick Saylor has had that big touchdown run. We've seen a lot of Ray nice Lee. runs from Hibbett, able to extend drives, and Larson Brown having very good first half, just to say the least, able to extend a bunch of plays, a lot of play action. I think we'll be seeing a lot more of that this half. Yep, and Sailors, who had that big touchdown run a few minutes before the end of the first half backfield. Larson Brown is going to hand it off to him, and he's not going to get very far before Ray Coney Sailors takes him down. Here. Ray Coney made the stop. Not getting much there, first play. Getting everything back settled in, trying to get the run game going, which is... What I think Mason needs to do, you get a run game going. Of course, last week against Sycamore, that's how they won the game, through Nick Sailors on the ground. I think they might be trying to do more of that. Now, Larson Brown under center. He takes the snap. And play action, rolls out to his right, facing some pressure, but gets the throw off. And he finds this re receiver, Zach Adlita. Tiptoes it in, and that would have been a catch in the NFL there as he got both feet in bounds. Impressive toe tap there. So Comets now going to have a first down around Marcus midfield. Another play we've seen almost every play action from 
Larson Brown so far throwing on the run. He's been great at it. A lot more throwing on the run than just in the pocket throws. And the way it's going, there's no need to switch it up. Yeah, this play action really been working so far for Mason. That's something they've been trying to get going all season long today, having a lot of success. And now Larson Brown going to hand it off to Tay Hibbett and breaks through a tackle. And he picks up almost eight yards. You know, it's so impressive, Hibbett. You know, contact almost immediately at the line of scrimmage, and he's hey, able to Hibbitt. break through tackles just so easily. Much, much Andrew better Rogers running from Hibbett so far this game. We mentioned last week game against Sycamore, he's getting stopped at the line, two. not being able to push for much. In this game, it's almost been the complete opposite, getting, breaking the first contact right at the line of scrimmage and being able to push for an extra six, seven yards. Can't ask for much more. And that's been crucial, setting up these second and shorts. They take a lot of pressure off the play calling. Off of Larson Brown, they make things easier. And now, hand it off again to Hibbit. And he pushes forward. He's still going. Right down at the 40-yard line, first down. Tay Hibbit running violently right now. He's just dragging Fairfield defenders everywhere he goes. The only thing I can think of when seeing that is, that's a sophomore running back. Imagine in two years when this guy's a senior and he's just running all over defenses. This definitely has the brightest future out of anybody on this team. Well, probably the youngest player on this team, honestly. Yeah, not a lot of sophomores. You know, play a lot. One of the offensive linemen, Liam Davidson, is a sophomore. Uh, sophomore Tami Adesanya plays some on defense, but mostly upperclassmen for the Comets. So, Larson Brown fires that one into tight coverage. Hits the hands of Colin Billhorn, nearly intercepted on the bounce. So now, second and ten. Brown kind of catches a break there. A lot of zip on the ball from Brown over the middle. We mentioned earlier with the snapping, with weather going down a little bit, there's a flag. Brown yeah, put a lot of heat on that ball, threw it into tight coverage, and probably wasn't the best decision there. So there's a pass breakup. And holding, holding on the comments as well. So Mason gets pushed back a lot to make the bad play worse. Now it's going to be you know, replay first down, but, or, excuse me, it's going to be second, and it's going to replay second down, second to 20. We've seen good passing so far from the few oh, attempts point. this half from Larson Brown. Really nothing inaccurate so far. Yeah, replaying first down here. Quentin Kaler moving. And now Brown fakes the handoff to Sailors, rolls out to his left, facing some pressure, and he's going to throw it away. Smart decision by Brown. <laughs> Second and 20, nothing downfield. Don't force anything, throw it away. The first down 20. Yeah, and that's a skill that Larson Brown's improved so far this season. Earlier in the year, especially when he was coming directly off of those injuries, he was kind of forcing some plays, holding on the ball too long, and he was taking a lot of sacks. That's what caused him. The second injury was a hard sack. So Larson Brown's showing a lot more pocket presence and poise. Very good protection as well so far today. Hands it off to Sailors, showing some patience. But wow, big tackle from Kabi Bivens as he just pile drives Nick Sailors. Joe Jackson. So now going to set up third and long. Kabi Bivens, as we mentioned, number one leading tackler for this Fairfield team for a reason. You see a big tackle there on Sailors. It's the reason he's number one. Yeah, and now Comets probably going to be forced to pass it here. And for the first time tonight, I feel like on third down, we're going to say they're not in field goal range. This is probably an area where they would punt if they don't convert or at least pick up some significant yardage here. Definitely looking to get around that 35-yard line if you do want to go for it on fourth. Weston Simmons in motion. Larson Brown takes a snap out of the shotgun, rolls out to his left. He's got protection, and he finds his target. But even then, only going to pick up about four yards. So now Completed fourth for the Comets, and Brown 12 going to be the call. Fourth and 13, excuse me. So not a, gr not a great spot for the Comets, and they're still going to have to punt despite that completion. Fourth down and 13. You know, we saw a fake punt earlier, but that was a fourth and four. I don't think there's Sean any Kruckenberg reason to fake it here. Kruckenberg, we've seen 
these past few games being able to pin pin the punt down inside the five. And Krukenberg holds on to it there to kind of try to signal a fake, but pumps it away, gets a nice bounce. So Fairfield's going to start with the ball just around their own 11 yard line. On Krukenberg's punt. Every drive you got to be thinking is when is Fisher going to take Nick over Taylor. because this is not a game that you see Fisher having a lot, especially last week with such a dominant game. You got to think that, you know, any play he could really just take over. Yeah, not only was it a dominant game, he put up big numbers against Lakota West, who has a star-studded defense, multiple Division One recruits, Over a lot of star power. Rushing. And he, yeah, over 200 yards rushing there. He had his team within a touchdown away of winning that game. Fisher from the bubble screen. Is that intercepted? I think it is. Comets pick up the tip. Jake Bates, the senior, comes up with it. And that is a major swing of momentum. The Comets going to get the ball around the goal line. And Talon Fisher tries to throw the bubble screen, and it is blown up. And Bates is hyped right now. Don't let Nick Sailors be unsung here, as he's the one that gets a hand on that football, tips it up, Jake Bates comes down with it, and now Comets have all the momentum, getting the ball right at the one yard line. Probably gonna see Nick Sailors, who just made that play, have a chance to run it in for another touchdown. And Mason just has all the momentum right now. You're getting the ball inside the 10, perfect Nick Sailors range. You're able to make this game 20 to seven possibly and if you do that two possession game it's hard for a team who doesn't have much going for them to even to come back in a situation like this yeah, and that is a game changing play a rare mistake from Talon Fisher and Larson Brown gonna push forward trying to get the QB sneak and uh oh the flag. there's a flag thrown Fairfield seems to think it's gonna be on the Comets Larson Brown kept it We'll see what the officials have to say, but Brown did not get the touchdown regardless. On that play. See Nick Sailors. Yeah. And they're going to say a push there. So, any college football fans familiar with the Bush push? You know, your running backs cannot push the quarterback forwards, and they're going to say that Sailors did that. Uh, so, going to be a penalty there. Kastner really upset, d doesn't understand the call. I'm not too familiar with that with that call. I've, yeah. I don't think I've ever seen that. So one of the most famous plays in college football history, Reggie Bush, you know, in USC, we're facing off against Notre Dame, two of the best teams in college football that year. And at the goal line, last play of the game, Reggie Bush pushes forward their quarterback, Matt Leinert, for a touchdown. Probably would not have got the touchdown without the push. It was a very controversial play. led to some rule changes. And now, right there. So now... You know, replay first down. It's Comet's going to pick up a couple yards there. The penalty yeah, the sorry for the the history the lesson player. there, but def definitely a play you don't see ever, ever very often. James so even though it is a flag, you're still in very good range. Gets a few there, wow. Nick Sailors. I still can't believe that that's a rule. Yeah, I've never heard of that. You know, you have to be able to pick up. Pick up the yardage under your own weight. You know, the defensive lineman, if they're going to push you back. Oh, and now Larson Brown goes direct snap to Sailors. They tried to run this earlier, and he fumbled it. And Sailors pushes forward, isn't able to pick up the touchdown, but gets a few yards. And now, a, a yeah, a late, late flag. flag. This one probably going to be on Fairfield as Ben Cravens, the offensive lineman, all of a sudden kind of got thrown to the thrown down, down a few seconds after the whistle was blown. There's no need for that. Most likely going to be an automatic first down with a late penalty like this. Yeah, and it was going to be, you know, third and three. You had a chance to stop the Comets uh, with those next two plays. And right here, personal foul on Fairfield. Comets half the distance to the goal. So now just a few, you know. Offsetting personal But foul. there's actually offsetting penalties. So the Comets pushed back as well. Fairfield's kind of breathing a sigh of relief right there. That could have been another game changer. So the Comets third down at the two, third three yard line. The three. I missed that flag on Mason, did you see what it was? Yeah, and they just threw one flag, but it was offsetting personal fouls. And 
Larson Brown. And Fairfield jumps off sides. The Comets know it. And so not a new set of downs after that last oh, play, but now Comets will move forward after this one. Three plays, three penalties. We were talking about earlier in the first half how much of a clean game it was. Just a few minutes into the second half, or about 10 minutes into the second half, and you already have about double of the penalties that you had in the first. But the good news for the Indians right there is that offsides isn't a new set of downs, and you're at the three-yard line. It's only half a distance to the goal. They really only lost about a, a yard and a half there. Not too catastrophic. And now Brown takes snap, hands it off to Sailors, and he's stuffed again. Fairfield putting together a really nice goal line stand. They might even push Sailors backwards there. So Comets have a decision to make here at the goal line. Do you take the points and kick the field goal or go for the touchdown? If I'm Mason, I think I go for it here. And they're going to bring on the kicking unit. And Daniel, will make it a two-point, a two-possession uh, two game. game. But with the way your defense is playing, this unstoppable. And I actually agree with this call, Daniel. You're up by six, so it still is a one-possession game. Your defense is playing really well, but we do know how dangerous Talon Fisher is. He can take any play for a touchdown. This right here, like the guarantee, you know, it's going to extend your lead and protects you from any big plays. And Colson so Colson Bunch. Bunch extends the lead, 16 to seven. Three for three on field goals today. And he's having a career day on senior night. So it makes it a two-possession game up by nine. You know, I guess I can understand that call. Just make it a two-possession game any way you can. Rely on your defense, who have been very reliable so far, especially this half, already first, already forced a turnover inside the goal line or inside the red zone. Yep. So Fairfield, that is a major win right there. Comets got the ball at their one-yard line. And they, ha they nearly had a touchdown, but a bush push rule. Comets penalty pushes them back. And then Comets is going to have to settle for three points. When you get the ball at the one yard line and don't come away with the touchdown, I'm sorry, but that's a failure of a possession right there. Fairfield's got to see that as an absolute win. You're still in this game. You're only down by nine points. That could very easily swing. We've seen how dangerous this offense can be you know, in previous games. Last time Mason had so much momentum like this, Kalon Fisher took the ball 60 yards into the end zone. So, yeah. you can't celebrate too much. You know, you're up by two possessions, but quarterback on the other side, you know, game's not over. And a squib kick, Comets might get it. And they do, Krukenberg is gonna come up with it. He had the interception earlier, a fake punt for a first down, and right there, the Comets squib it. I don't know if that was intentional or not, or if it just happened to hit off of the Fairfield defender, but Sean Krukenberg makes the heads up play and picks it up. Comets are gonna retain possession. So Talon Fisher not gonna have a chance to get the ball. And Bunch squibs it. And Krukenberg just goes up and wins it like a basketball rebound. How many big plays like that has Mason had today? You have the fake punts, you have all the, the weird kickoffs. Being able to win, win the possession game so much. This has dominated the possession game. Yeah, it just feels like everything's been going Mason's way except for, you know, on these third and fourth downs. Uh, I mean, they haven't been able to score as many touchdowns as they'd like, but you have another chance here. Yeah, so offense stays on the field, and now Fairfield defense might get a little worn out. And Weston Simmons He's takes the throw. sweep. Oh! And a bad throw. And so Earlier on when Larson Brown was out, Lars, or, uh, Quentin Kaler was playing quarterback, and that means that Weston Simmons then suddenly became the emergency quarterback. So he's been practicing you know, his, his passing form quite a bit the past few weeks, and they put in that trick play. I believe that play was designed for Lakota West, didn't get to use it, and they tried out there, but unfortunately Weston Simmons doesn't get enough air on the ball. We actually saw that last week against Mason. Um, Sycamore to Gio Gear for the touchdown. Yeah, they had that a touchdown on it, so. That was one of their only scores of the game, and Mason doing exactly that line. just couldn't Shot execute it. Yeah, Simmons was looking forward to that play. Unfortunately, can't capitalize. Brown facing some pressure, but good protection. And that ball thrown into tight coverage for Colin Billhorn, who's kind of been his favorite, Brown's favorite target tonight. 
but incomplete. So now third and ten. We've seen a lot of tight coverage throws from Brown today. Very aggressive, putting a lot of zip on the ball. Is that maybe a little too much for Bill Horn? To break it up. And again, the comments, you know, you, you keep possession after an onside kick slash swib kick, you know, kind of a crazy special teams play. You have to capitalize, and right here, they're on the verge of having to punt. It's the thing, they've been able to get the ball so many different ways, but it's just about can you get points out of it. Yeah, especially getting those touchdowns. That's where they've struggled today. And the play action. Rush and wow, you. okay, now you definitely have to punt it. Big time play. Brown is Jordan down. Baker and Brown took a big hit. Hit that shoulder. It's the second time today we've seen Brown stumbling a little bit after a play. Yeah. Jojo and Baker broke through. And Baker man. came zooming in from the second level Check. and just nails Martin Larson Brown. Brown. Punt position for the Comets. So Comets forced to punt after that. Krukenberg. Good punt there. Gets some bounce and going to be around the 20 yard line. Exactly. At the 20 yard line. So and now Talon Fisher. You know, he had to wait a few plays, but does get to come back out on the field. Down by nine and get his team back in this game. Had to bring up that the Mason's punt coverage on that uh, on that punt. Three players just rushing in immediately. Well, so no nobody blocked. Even if Fairfield was able to get the ball there, he wouldn't have a fun time returning it. Yeah, and the comments they really value special teams. And they like to play their starters on offense and defense on special teams. That's something that kind of sets them apart from a lot of teams. Is they they you know they view it as an equal two offense and defense and they like to get their best 11 guys out there and it pays off on plays like that. So Fisher just gonna take it and run immediately. Able to get you know three, four yards. So a decent first Talon play there. Fisher kept it. You're, you're Fisher, you're gonna be running with a little more aggression this, this half. Pretty disappointing first half. Offense couldn't go the way they wanted to, especially with Going into this game, second-ranked offense yards. in the GMC, averaging 35 points Second a game. Most likely not going to reach that mark today, the way this Mason defense has just been unstoppable. But I feel like we might see a lot more runs from Fisher this half. Absolutely. That was the area they had the most success earlier on. And now he's going to drop back and throw it. Looking downfield again, and it's intercepted by Krukenberg. A little bit of deja vu from the first half. And he's running down the field. He's got a lot of space. Oh, and he nearly gets the touchdown. Last week, he had a pick six get called back for blocking the back. And right there, Krukenberg was just yards away from a touchdown on senior night. But still, interception number two. He might be injured, but a big time play. Comets super excited on the sideline, hoping that Krukenberg's okay as we get a replay of this. Once again, another overthrow from Fisher. Krukenberg right there in perfect position. Able to take it back. In fact, the same exact interception from last week. What a two games for Sean Krukenberg. Yeah, Krukenberg is able to walk off, playing center field like he loves to do. Just perfectly picks the ball out of the air, and then that block from Jake Bates nearly got the touchdown. So now Comets again getting the ball deep, deep in the Fairfield territory. You've got to think this is not just a, not just points, but six. You need a touchdown right here. You haven't been able to capitalize. Like, how many times has your defense put you in this position today? Just couldn't ask for anything more. And Nick Sailors scores the touchdown first play. So the Comets, a couple straight stop things. Uh, Big plays from the defense, and they're able to convert Nicholas Sailor's touchdown number two on the game. You can make that game. seven straight touchdowns scored by Nick Sailor's. Same thing from last week. Both Sailor's and Krukenberg, the two best players on each side of the football. Mason slowly starting to run away with this game. Yeah, Nick Sailor's, they, they played him a lot of defense this year. Earlier in the season, actually didn't run the ball a lot, and you've got to wonder... You think back to that first week in Skahanna Lincoln. You know, could the outcome would have been different if they had just trusted Nick Sailors on offense? But he's been spectacular these last few weeks. Colson Bunch nails the field goal. Perfect on the day today. And he 
you really just can't can't emphasize at so much. You can only emphasize so much how good Nick Sirius has been for this offense. No matter how much you say, it's still probably an understatement. Yeah, he has been you know, the source of their big plays so far. He's the source of a lot of energy. You know, Larson Brown, obviously the leader of this offense, the quarterback, but he's he's more of a chill, calm, and cool personality, the guy that you want, you know, in those stressful situations. But Nick Sailors, he is that energetic, you know, electric personality that can kind of get the guys riled up. The defense has that Jake Bates, and now the offense kind of getting that spark from Nick Sailors. Although we haven't heard much of Jake Bates, we've heard a few big plays. He's been everywhere. Yeah. He had that huge, had that interception. He had that interception, of course, and then on that return from Kruckenberg, a great block, able to get a few extra yards. So that kickoff initially muffed, but Fairfield picks it up and returns just past the 25-yard line. So Comet defense back out onto the field, and they're feeling good about themselves, especially Sean Kruckenberg, who had a bit of an injury scare on the interception return, but he's back out there. So that's good news for the Comets. It's a three possession, or actually no, it would be a two possession game with two yeah. two point conversions. Two, two point so. conversions, so Fairfield still very much in this game. A lot of time left, three minutes in the third quarter. Still the entire fourth quarter to go. And that's still a quarter for Fisher to lock in. Yeah, yeah and Talon Fisher, with, with his big playability, he can evaporate a, a lead like that. Now Jordan Jackson, they haven't been able to get him going so far tonight, but that's his best run so far, eight yards on first down. And they've mostly just been using him to establish the Jordan run on first Jackson down and then doing a read option or a play action next ball. play. So you gotta wonder if they mess with that rhythm a little bit, maybe try to get some, some creative, find some creative ways to get him the ball, considering his speed and athleticism. You know, he's playing football in the Big 12 start next year and you, you know, they need to get him going down like you got to run the ball a little more this shy passing game not been working at all today so and you've still got time you don't need to be rushing it and Talon Fisher throws it and that could have been a pick six you know he's not on the same page as a receiver and he actually overthrows that ball Talon a little bit Fisher. if that ball had been underthrown Looking Zach forward, Rogers was Isaiah underneath Glover. that route that would have been a touchdown been going the other way so Talon Fisher his poor decision actually kind of saves him right there just another missed throw. It's, you know, he said he's known for his rushing, but go, going into today, he's he is not a bad passer. Just today, just Com hasn't been yeah. his day Com so defense far. Defense has been rattling him, and now they run it again with Jackson. He nearly gets tackled in the backfield, but stays up and gets going. Jordan and that's Jackson the kind of plays they're missing. The if you can get Jackson going, field. he can pick up those hard yardage for you. Stumbles there. Malachi Reed. We'll see if it looks like he's all right as he gets right back up. But now Fairfield picks up the first down. And Comets have had a lot of three and outs. Their defense hasn't been out on the field a lot. So and you hope those those push runs from from Jackson there can set up a read option. I mean, you're Mason. You know it's coming with Fisher. Yep, and a read option there. Hands it off to Jackson. He's able to get just about a yard. Comets just read that one perfectly. Had guys flying in from all directions. I can only see a read option happening these next few plays. The, the run game, stretch to the side. It's been working so good this drive. Kai Wolfolk in on the stop for the Comets. Yeah. Along with Aaron and now Talon Fisher. Second and eight. He definitely wants to to make this more manageable. They've struggled on the long third downs and he fumbles that snap, picks it up, recovers the play and now he's running with it. Makes a man miss, he's got a first down and more. And he's gonna run out of bounds. There's that playmaking ability. Not the first bad snap that we've seen from Fairfield, Fairfield today, but what a great job from Fisher there to be able to get it back, not panic, make a man miss, get the first down and a little bit more. Able to keep the drive. Alive for Fairfield. Yeah, Talon Fisher. This Fairfield team is going to go as far as he can take them, and it's plays like that that are going to keep them in this game. And now he leads that huddle out. Him and Jackson in the backfield for a new set of downs. Man in motion. And facing a lot of pressure, Talon Fisher brought down immediately. 
who wasn't there. Bryce Falk, Caden Davis, Malachi Reed all in on the sack. Jake Bates came in to clean up. Mason fully saw it coming. You know it's going to be a run from Fisher there. Great job to get pressure. Absolutely nowhere to go. Second and 17 now. That was a big loss. Mason, you're trying to get some of this momentum back. This is the first time this half that we've seen Fairfield really establish a drive so far. Now, Fisher gonna throw it. He's on the run, that's where he succeeds. And he kind of makes a sidearm throw. That's an unbelievable pass. He finds his target, and now the Fairfield is in the red zone. On the move, you know, off platform throw, and somehow able to find Braden Schenken. Braden Schenken, we haven't heard his name much, but leading receiver for this Fairfield team. You see it right there, what a great catch, great throw, able to get out of the pocket, extend the play. I've seen that so many times from Fisher. Yeah, and we talk so much about Fisher as a runner, and deservedly so, leading the conference in rushing yards and touchdowns. But there's a reason he's being recorded, he's a three-star quarterback prospect. The run game still working for this Fairfield team. Jackson being Jackson able to push to the ten yard line. through first contact, able Jake to get almost feels like four or five yards now after the first hit. The yeah. Yard line. You know, with, a, with a different running back, that probably would have been you know stuff for no yards, potentially a loss. But right there, when you've got a Division One player like Jackson, Second he's able to make six. something out of nothing. And now clock running down in this third quarter. We'll see if Fairfield. He get the snap off in time, and they do. Talon Fisher is going to keep it himself, and he's brought down by Bryce Falk. So that's going to take us to the fourth quarter. Comets scored 10 points in that, extending their lead to 16 points. So we'll be back with you after a short break for all the last quarter action. Other's mind. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Well, before you abuse, criticize, and accuse, walk a mile in my shoes. And we are back here, fourth quarter. Fairfield putting together their best drive of the second half. Now deep into Comet territory in the red zone. And False start there from Fairfield. It's gonna kick off the quarter. A lot of frustration from Jackson. Okay, in case you're just Indian. joining us, a bit of a third quarter recap. This, you know, started. Five Comets were up 13 to seven, and um, they didn't score on the first drive, but then third a couple down. turnovers Indian. set up some points. Uh, Colson Bunch hit a field goal, and then an intercept, another interception from Sean Krukenberg set Jake up. Jake Bates, and, and then an interception from Jake Bates set up. A Nick Sailor's touchdown. I'm Andrew Little here with Daniel Panetti. And now they're backed up after that penalty. Third down, Talon Fisher looking for his receiver. And he does find Glover. Nice play by very Glover close there. To the first down marker. A little bit of a little bit thrown to the right, not led completely, but a nice job to turn back. Get yards fourth there. Three. Yeah, so now fourth and two. Fairfield offense most definitely going to stay out there. You know, they were discussing it with the sidelines, but you're down 16 points in the fourth quarter. You definitely need to get a touchdown here. A field goal would not be enough. 
field goal would make it a, a two possession game, but as you said, you need you need six here. You're running out of time slowly. Now Fisher facing a lot of pressure. Somehow delivers an accurate ball, but Zach Rogers makes a pass break up. Now what Zach Rogers might lack in height, he makes up for with aggression right there. Looked like he had it in the end zone. Great last second play from Rogers to get the ball out. Huge turnover, another turnover for Mason. So Zach Rogers, we're gonna watch him here. Manned up in coverage. Has a size disadvantage, but stays with the entire time. Just knocks that ball away at the last second. That's a great play. Comet offense back on the field. And that's, that's demoralizing for Fairfield right there. They thought they had the touchdown. You know, an accurate pass to Glover. The Comet defense again makes a play. It's not even a bad call to go for it there, just couldn't get they it. Had to go for it there. Yeah. Down 16, you know, a two score game, and that's with two point conversions being successful. Now Brown hands it off to Sailors, and he's stuffed. Won't even get back to the line of scrimmage. Really the first time that we've seen Sailors not being able to get back. Fairfield defense needs to get a stop here. Especially with Mason so close to their end zone, not a lot of room to really work with. Credit the tackle to so the Matthew common offense here. Definitely gonna be trying to work the clock, you know, already. You know, 10 minutes left in this game, so they've, they've, in their one play, they've already dropped off about 40 seconds of play clock. They're gonna continue to do that. Expect them to run the ball. And Larson Brown hands it off to Sailors again. And Sailors has some space. He makes a jump cut. He's got some room down the field. And he's going to be tackled just past the 45-yard line. Some frustration from the Fairfield defenders. Another big play from Nick Sailors. You need a guy to get you yards. Look no further than Nick Sailors. Takes this run, follows the block from Quentin Kaler. Jumps past one guy and uses his speed to get to midfield. Eventually, he's brought down by the corners, Josiah Jackson and Xavier Isaacs. You know, those are the only guys on the defense that have the speed to catch up with Nick Sailors. Now Larson Brown, gonna take a snap with Tay Hibbett in the backfield. Brown takes it, hands it off, and Hibbett met immediately at the line. And if Mason is able to get a win out of hey, this, this is such a big game, especially with the playoffs Dory right around the corner. You got Princeton next week. Yeah, and you know they started off the season really well in the you know six and zero in the GMC. Obviously, they did have the loss week one to Gahanna, but you know undefeated in your conference kind of had some of the, the air deflated out of the season with the Lakota West loss. But right here, a win against Fairfield, who a lot of people thought were the favorites coming into this game, would be huge heading into the postseason. And neutral zone infraction there from Fairfield. So the Comets now, instead of having a second and eight, will have a second and three. You know, kind of talking about this GMC landscape right now. The Comets technically ahead of Fairfield, uh, just because that their two, one of their two losses was out of conference. Fairfield, both of their losses came in conference, but Mason. You know, they play Princeton le next week. A lot of people are assuming that is going to be a loss because Princeton is one of the top teams in the city right now. Um, so Fairfield and then we're kind of going to be – this is the game that's going to determine who's third place in the GMC most likely. And with that, probably going to determine who gets a home game in the playoffs. There's a chance we see these two teams have a rematch. Larson Brown under center. Phil Horn in motion. He's going to sweep it. The Sailors, who's going to pick up the first down. Nick Sailors picked up the Able first down for the bunch comments. of clock this drive. He was stopped by Ray really no Cody. passing at all. It's really the whole entire goal. You don't need to score. But let's get the clock down as much as you can. Limit the amount of time Fairfield could have when they get the ball back. Yeah. Just about eight minutes left in this fourth quarter, so Comet's doing a good job trimming time off the clock. You know, the score here would definitely ice the game away. And 
Sailors again takes the handoff. He's got some room, breaks through a tackle, and pushes his way forward to about the 35 yard line. So, going to be second and short now. What a statement it's been so far from Mason. Fairfield heading into this game, averaging 35 points a game. They've been one of the best offenses, not just in the GMC, but in, in the city. And today, the county defense is showing that they are truly one of the best defenses around. You know, like we thought, the Dakota West game you know, hurt their average. They're averaging 11 points per game right now, but that, that 37 points allowed to Dakota West was an anomaly. And some of those points were not the fault of the defense. You know, pick six and special teams touch, touchdown. Right now, Larson Brown hands it off again to Sailors. Falls forward for a few yards. So... Yeah. You say how good this Fairfield offense was going into this that game in Mason's top three defense. And we knew this Taylor defense was very good, but still very, very almost surprising. Yeah, this how is, this is the best been. game they've played. They, they've looked like a great defense all season. Right now they look like an elite defense. This is a defense that if I think if they played like this against Dakota West, very different ball game. You, you could argue they kind of did in the first half. Uh, second half things definitely got out of hand. But right now, they're playing a complete football game. And the offense, the offense is definitely helping out, playing a much cleaner, cleaner game. And Larson Brown going to call the timeout on third down here. Didn't like the look that he had with the play call, so. As a reminder, you've got time. The Let the clock run down and then and time out. It's been a great job by Mason the getting the clock down. They started this drive with no about 11 minutes on the clock, the and now you're just about we to go under six minutes. So getting almost half of the game clock down. You know you're up by about 16. You're up by 16. You know it's definitely not over, but it's hard for a team, especially like Fairfield, who's been struggling today. Scoring 16 points in six minutes is pretty difficult, and Mason's been driving down. They're probably going to end up extending this lead. Yeah, and right here, this is Fairfield's last chance. Not only do they need to stop Mason here, but they probably need a turnover if they want any chance of winning this game. If you're down 16 points, that means you need two touchdowns, and you need to successfully convert two two-point conversions. So, unlikely scenario, and it's not gonna happen if you don't stop the Comets on this play. Two receivers to the right. And then Larson Brown under center. Two tight ends tucked with him. They hand it off to Sailors, and he is met in the backfield. He's going to lose yardage. So we'll see here if the Comets elect to punt it around the 40 yard line. You know, definitely an interesting decision here. If you go for it and convert, puts the game away. If you fail, you're giving Fairfield pretty good um, field position. And yeah, the punt unit is going to come out. And I, that's the right call. You're going to pin Fairfield back and make them go you know, 80 to 90 yards to score a touchdown, and then they'll have to get the ball back again. This is really just perfect position for Krukenberg. We haven't seen him have a touchback yet. And uh, he's going to get one there. And <laughs> Comets field team tries to tries to make a play and keep that you know inside the five yard line you, you gotta applaud the effort there but I'm a serious jinx <laughs> yeah this entire game you know touchbacks on the kickoff team awesome punts you know you're not you're not always as big of a fan there they definitely did want to want to pin Fairfield back but 20 yard line they still have to go 80 yards so it's, it's a good spot for the Mason defense only five and a half minutes left to, left in the game Talon Fisher's going to need to make some magic happen. Fisher and, and, and Jackson in the backfield, three receivers out right, and Fisher going to throw it. He's got some, got some pressure, scrambles out, and picks up a few yards on the QB scramble. Good coverage by Mason, able to get pressure. Really just been the whole story the for this Fairfield offense. Liam really nothing in the passing game going for Fairfield. So Fisher again drops back, throwing it deep. This time 
It's an accurate pass, but Krukenberg is there to help with the pass breakup. And Seems like Braden every Shanklin can't come down with it. I think every deep ball that Fisher has thrown this game, Krukenberg has been right there, either getting a pass break up or an interception. We see it once again. Yeah, good coverage there. So now sets up a third medium. Definitely, you know, four down situation for Fairfield. Down 16 points with five minutes left. Talent Fisher again drops back the pass. Facing pressure, Caden Davis misses. And he's going to just throw it away. So Fisher keeps it alive without losing any yardage. He was looking for Isaiah Glover there. He was being pursued by... One thing we have seen that's very good from Fisher is being able to evade pressure in the pocket. You know, he's known for being able to extend plays, but not a lot of big sacks for Mason today. Yeah, in the comments, their pass rush is one of their strengths. They love to get after the quarterback, and they've done that today, but they haven't converted with the sacks as often as they have in you know previous games, even against Dakota West, because of the way that Talon Fisher plays football. And there senses the pressure on the ground on fourth down, trying to make something happen, and the Comet defense swarms to him. And that right there gonna be the game. Most likely Talon Fisher, uh oh. And Fisher is onto his back. Talon Fisher. Never want to see that late in the game. Star player, you know, especially somebody like Fisher that's played such a tough game today. And then another comment. He is down. Not only is Brought your offense down. not going, now your best player on offense just went down. On the field. Yeah, and hopefully this is nothing serious for Fisher. Let's take a look here. Extends the play, and then he's brought down by five. Five different comments, just had a lot of weight fall onto him and sometimes that's what it takes knees down on the field all around we'll take a quick break here actually Talon Fisher getting off the field Talon under his own Fisher. power so looked like that was going to be an extended uh, absence there you know on the, the medical issue but able to walk off on his own power very encouraging now the, the Fairfield defense has to get out there and try to make another stop. Hope it's not something serious. Yeah, and what a game it's been from Talon Fisher. You know, probably not the game that he hoped for, but he really has done a lot of things to keep his team in the game. Uh, the 55-yard running rushing touchdown is going to be the highlight of everybody's mind. Um, he's, he's played better than the stats are Yeah, showing. and the best play that I saw him make isn't isn't one that ended up counting because the receiver went out of bounds, but. He made a play on the run, found his receiver on a fourth down play. So he, he's made plays tonight. He's showing why he's one of the top quarterbacks in the area. Now Nick Sailors takes the run, and he's gone. You say eight touchdown. straight touchdowns. Like you said, can you say eight? Nick Sailors, three touchdowns today, five last week. He has been the engine of the Comet offense. Return of the King playing a lot of offensive snaps these last two weeks. Everything we've seen, everything we saw last week against Sycamore, we've been seeing tonight with it's Sean Krukenberg getting interceptions, getting turnovers for Mason, and then Nick Saylor's just running all over whatever defense he plays. So Nick Saylor's is, he's trying to catch up with Talon Fisher on the rushing touchdown leaderboard in the GMC. Fisher headed into the night with 12. Sailors headed in with eight, so now right now Sailors is trailing 13 to 11, so only down by two. There's there's a chance he gets another one, and then you've got another week to catch up. So that's that's a, that's a battle to watch. Going into today, the two scoring leaders in the GMC was Tom Fisher and Nick Sailors. So with only one touchdown so far for Fisher, Sailors really They're closing the gap there. That's maybe next week if he has a big game against Princeton. They're going to need him to, certainly. Princeton, another really high-powered offense, one of the best teams in the GMC. You know, Fairfield did lose to Princeton 28-14 to four weeks ago. But the way that the Comets are playing in Fairfield right now, that's a game that at, at first glance might have seemed like you know a long shot to win, but it looks very winnable if they can play at this same level. 
I think just the most dominant, I think, basically what the entire season. Absolutely. You go, you go into today, underdogs, honestly, and see your, a lot of players last senior night playing a team like this, going in as home underdogs, and being able to have a performance like this. Yeah, home underdogs. That's a thing a lot of people talk about in the NFL or in college. You don't hear that a lot in high school football. Certainly played played out tonight in the comments. This specific comment team, this senior class, they love the, they love they love that underdog role. They're embracing it. And the past few weeks it's they've played really well. Today, a decisive victory over Fairfield. This is this is a potential season changing, you know. This late in the season, postseason just two weeks away. Last year the comments they beat Princeton late in the season to kind of save some of their, their playoff standing. So they've proved that it can be done, the Comets right now. And what better of a time to be playing your best football Absolutely. than right before the playoffs? They're clicking on all cylinders is the best the offense has looked. The defense has been stellar. Is Talon Fisher not in the game anymore? No, and you know, had the injury, it, it's not worth the risk. And it's Kiaran Love, he's one of their star defensive players. Also the backup quarterback, and he went downfield there for his first pass. Not accurate, but you gotta love the aggression from Fairfield. Still showing some heart, even though this game is pretty much over. Hey, you say love, one of the best, one of the best athletes on this team. Fourth with two interceptions on defense, where he's known for being in the secondary but also as a backup quarterback. And Mason's almost the same way with their backup quarterback as well. Yeah, Quentin Kaler, another great athlete. They've seen him. And Jordan Jackson, I about said, I want to see some Jordan Jackson on this drive. And right there, Jackson. they deliver a second down run to him. We've almost <laughs> exclusively seen him run the ball on first downs. There, they get him involved later in the possession. And it plays out first down. And there shows off his speed. Kyle Amazing Wilson jump cut. That's the Thomas. athleticism that he's going to, you know, utilize when he's a West Virginia Mountaineer. Both him and his brother are gonna play there. That's gotta be exciting. I'm a twin myself, so if I, if we were both Division I football players, I think it'd be pretty cool to play at the same same school and the Jackson brothers have just that chance. And Fairfield yeah, picks up a pretty good play there. They're gonna run past the 50 yard line, so not done yet. Nicholas Harris made the stop for Mason. And the Comets have some of their reserves playing in right now. Um, the offensive lineman Ben Cravens, his brother Nicholas Cravens, the sophomore, and on the D-line, Tyler Dalton, one of the backup linebackers, is playing. Number 91, Alex Oric, the sophomore, playing at DT. Some good experience for the young guys. And a lot of strong running from Jackson this half. There's a flag down. But yeah, almost every, every carry he's been getting this half, he's been able to push forward. almost eight yards every carry this half it seems like coach Kastner not too happy on the sideline Tammy Adesanya made the stop for Mason yeah so a new set of downs for Fairfield and a quick pass there from Love Couple plays made in the open field there. So Tyler Dalton going to be second and short. And Nathaniel Werner. You know your Fairfield made the stop game's the already comments. out of reach, but if you're able to end this game on just something positive, getting a touchdown late, just something to go into build it, just something to build off of going into next week. Absolutely, yeah, especially with the health of Talon Fisher. Uncertain, they fumble the snap. You never want to see that this late in the game. You know, it's kind of been a sloppy game for Fairfield a little bit. So they're gonna move back a little bit after that play, third and long. Comet defense, you know, they don't want to give up any points right now. Right, you know, averaging only 11 points a game given up. And some of those touchdowns have actually been given up you know, by the offense. Looks like Comet's defense has been even better. Looks yeah. like they're gonna pick up that flag. And pressure coming off the outside. And Love is brought down for the sack. 
That's Malachi Reed and Liam McMains. So both juniors, even though they're starters, they're sta they stay down on the field Reed with the reserves and, Liam and they come away Indiana with the sack the there. Sack the so now Fairfield gonna punt. Comet's gonna have one more offensive possession. And senior Indiana. night, you, you know, definitely expect to see some of the seniors. Maybe they don't get as much playing time and also would love to see some underclassmen out there. Also, Larson Brown's last chance to play. And throw the ball. And now it's a fake, a fake punt. So it's so a yeah. gutsy call there from Fairfield. Love still on moving down. And we're not going to get it. You know, something I, I didn't think to say. Of Talon Fisher, also their punter. You know, your starting punter is out of there. Maybe they weren't confident in Love's punting ability or they just wanted to try something new. But there, inter interesting play. Um, and almost worked out. So showing some confidence in your players late in the game. Now a minute 45 left. Made the comet tackle. And it's been a great broadcast here. Very thankful with ICRC and our executive producer, Jason Dudley. And I was thankful for him. Michael Asher, great producer. And then the announcers, myself, Andrew Little, and then Daniel Panetti. Our camera operator, Zach Stewart, Alyssa Feinblatt, and Aaron Dornhecker. Thanks for all they do. And Eric Johan. So. Let Carrico run in the replay. Trey Capo running the can't graphics. You know, thank you for watching ICRC. It really does take a village to run these broadcasts. So it's not just those of us that you can hear. Brown took a knee for the Comets. And Comets take a knee right there. Again, and they're going to close out this game. What, what a performance it's been. 30 to 7. Dominant victory over the Fairfield the Indians. Field following the game. No spectators will be allowed on the field. We thank you. In senior advance. night, you know, the comment, this, this could be the last home game of the senior's career, depending on how the playoff standings work out. Although this, this win right here is going to be really helpful for the Comets. Much more likely to have a top eight seed now. 16 teams make the, the playoff in this, the southwest region for Ohio. And especially. Comets definitely going to be one of them. Next week versus Princeton. The way Mason played today, they could definitely give Princeton a fight is still going to go in as underdogs. Princeton, one of the best teams we've seen so far. But if we're ab you're able to put up points like Mason has this second half, you're able to stop stop an offense like they have. Fairfield, as we mentioned, the number number two offense. You had one of the best just overall players in the GMC with Taylon Fisher, and you're able to limit him. You're able to do that next week against Princeton basically secure yourself a home game. Yeah, and what a confidence booster this was. You know, coming in as underdogs, winning, not just winning the game, but winning in dominant fashion. You know, next week playing against Princeton, who has athletes all over the field, but highlighted by TJ Engelman, the Georgia Tech commit. He's a dominant offensive player. So that's gonna close out the game. Mason Comets, 30 to seven is the final here over the Fairfield Indians. You know, from wire to wire, they were the better team. Defense was spectacular. A lot of energy here for senior night. It was a pink out in the student section. And the Comet fans are going to go home happy. Comets build a lot of momentum next week. Going against Princeton. Fairfield next week will be playing at home. Their senior night against Lakota East, a very winnable game. They can get some momentum heading into the playoffs. Thanks again for watching tonight. I've been Andrew Little here All with Daniel the Panetti. The the Comets the the had a great time calling the game. Comets coming up with a big victory against the Fairfield the Indians. Thanks to ICRC TV for hosting us. Have a great night. Again, the final here this evening, Comets 30, Indians 7. Thank you for your attendance here this evening, everyone, and please drive home safely.